The next test I'm going to show you is going to be a Strep A dipstick test. This is the Throat Swab Rapid Strep Test. And so I'm going to be testing a positive control, a negative control, and I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to test myself by swabbing my own throat. Now the key to this, when you swab someone's throat, is to get all the way to the back where the tonsils are. If you've taken micro, you talked about how that's where the organism lives. You'll see white patchy plaque areas that are possibly the organism, and that's what you're going to want to actually swab. But when I actually take this throat swab sample from myself, I'm going to be putting it into reaction tubes or extraction tubes, just the same as I would positive and negative control. To these tubes, I'm going to be adding two reagents, reagent one and reagent two. We add four drops of each reagent because the first reagent is going to actually extract or remove antigens from strep bacteria from the surface of the bacteria if they are present in a patient sample. Reagent 2 actually contains antibodies against strep antigens that are on the surface of the bacteria. And so those antibodies are going to be how we are in the end going to detect whether or not the person has strep organism in their throat. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare my extraction tubes. I've got to add four drops of well-mixed reagent 1 to each tube. I'm going to add four drops of well-mixed reagent 2 to each tube. Since I'm using an external positive control, this one's easy. I'm just going to add a drop of control. Same with negative control. I'm going to add a drop of control. Patient sample is going to be a little more complicated. And the reason for that is you have to collect the sample. So collect the throat swab. And you're adding the swab to the extraction tube twisting it and squishing it in the tube and waiting about one minute. So I'm setting a one minute timer. So this is going to allow all of that gunk, possibly sputum, mucus, moisture area that was swabbed in the back of the throat to actually come into contact with the extraction reagent to get the antigen off of the swab from the strep organism that may or may not be present in the patient sample. And then it's going to allow the antibodies in reagent 2 or reagent B to react with those antigens binding them. Because it's going to be important that the antigens from the strep organism in the person's throat have time to bind to those antibodies so that we can see a reaction in the next step. So I've got about 10 seconds left. What I'm going to do is remove my swab and make sure and squish all that moisture out of the tip of that swab. And now comes the next step. The next step is where we take a dipstick. The dipstick, which you may notice, actually looks like a pregnancy test, especially those rapid pregnancy tests, rapid brand tests that we used um, for HCG testing in a previous lab. We're going to stick the stick into our extraction tubes and that amount of liquid we put in was only four drops for each because it will not go over the maximum line and that sample is going to be drawn up into the filter paper area. The filter paper area is like an immunoassay just like with the pregnancy test and it's going to allow us to detect the presence of streptococcus antigen in the positive control, the negative control, or the patient sample. This is a reaction that lasts for five whole minutes. So we're going to leave those sticks in the reaction tubes or in the extraction tubes for five whole minutes to see if we get a control line and a line in the test area. So we're going to read it just like a pregnancy test. 
what I'm going to show you is the results that you're supposed to be seeing for each type of test. So if you get a control line, which is the positive line on the top of the reaction area, you can consider your test valid because the sample was able to travel all the way up through the filter paper area. I'm going to grab my patient really quick and show you that our sample, oops, and it turned over on me, our sample has actually already traveled all the way to the top and you can start seeing the control line already. Now a positive test would be any amount of line seen in the test area at five minutes. You do have to wait the whole five minutes because that line that shows up might be rather faint and you might not see it until almost the end of the incubation. A negative test will show you a control line but no test line and an invalid test, if there's no control line, even if you see a positive line in the test area, we cannot trust the test because the sample did not travel all the way through the testing area on the immunoassay stick. So we have about three and a half minutes left. I'm going to try and show you what is actually happening with this test. So. In the stick, we have an immunoassay, which I mentioned before. But I'm going to start at the very beginning. What did I do first? I took a sample using a throat swab. So you can see the mouth. I put the swab in. And if any strep are present, the strep will now be on the swab. Strep organism. So strep organisms contain antigens, and we want to get those antigens off of the strep organism. So we put the swab into the tube with both reagent A and reagent B, or reagent 1 and 2. The first reagent gets the antigens off of the strep organism so that they can react with the second reagent, which has anti-strep A antibodies, and those antibodies are actually attached to colored particles. Now that the strep are attached to antibodies in that extraction tube, we can put in the testing strip. In the testing strip, if you were to zoom in microscopically, you would see that there are some more anti-strep A antibodies. And as the sample travels through the strip from bottom toward the top, those antigens from the strep organism if they are present, will stop in the testing area. And since they're attached to an antibody that has a colored particle on it, you will see a red line in that area. There are more antibodies to strep with colored particles than you actually need, so some will continue traveling up the strip and get to the control area, and they are captured by another stationary antibody that binds to those anti-strep antibodies forming a red line in the control area. This is why you have to see a control line because you have to know that the sample made it all the way through the testing system. So if you see two red lines, you have a positive test. If you have only a control line, you have a negative test. And if you don't see a control line, whether or not you see a line in the testing area, you have to say the test is invalid. This rapid strep swab test is detecting streptococcus antigen from the actual organism. This is different from the ASO or anti-streptolysin O latex test we also perform today because in the ASO test you are detecting antibodies that a person's immune system produced against the strep organism, you are not detecting the organism itself. So our test is almost complete. We have about seven seconds left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move us back over to our testing area. And we're going to take a look at our results. So after the five minutes, you can actually pull the strip out of the test. And for the positive control, you can see a control line, but you also see a faint 
positive test line. It's very faint, but it's there. So the positive control was positive. The negative control, you see a positive control line, but no line in the testing area. And I'll actually put positive and negative next to one another as a comparison. Positive control versus negative control. I'm getting very good lighting there. Let's see. Here we go. All right. And then last, myself. Do I have strep throat? The answer is no. I see a control line, but no positive line in the test area. So our patient is negative.